Hi there Escape owners. Today in your 2009 Ford Escape, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Blue Ox's base plate. There's five main components you'll need when flat towing your Escape behind your motorhome. You'll need your tow bar, which is the connection between your motorhome and your vehicle. You'll need your base plate, which provides the connection point for your tow bar to attach to your vehicle. You'll need your diode wiring, which takes all the lighting signals from your motorhome and transfers them back to the lights at the back of your vehicle so people behind you know your intentions when going down the road. And you'll need your supplemental braking system, which will apply the brakes in your vehicle when you hit the brakes in your motorhome. The last thing you'll need is just some safety cables, which acts as a supplemental connection in addition to your tow bar. Now I do want to make you aware that you should verify in your vehicle's owner's manual and check with your dealer before flat towing your Escape because there are going to be some restrictions, particularly with speed, when flat towing your Escape as is. And this is what our base plate looks like when it's installed. Most of it stays nice behind the bumper here and passes through existing openings. So you don't have to do any modifications to the fascia, which is really nice. So you don't have to do any cutting, especially since this is all a painted surface. Cutting it would be difficult to make it look nice. On the far ends on each side, you'll have your connection point for your tow bar. You get tabs that come included with your base plate and the tow bar actually hooks to these tabs but these are removable to give you a minimize on how much sticks out from your bumper. They simply just slide into place and then you just twist them until they lock in. You do the same thing on the other side for hooking up your tow bar. And when you're not using it, if you don't want them sticking in there, you can just pull the pin, twist them until they slide out. In the center, we have two bars that come out of our base plate that provides us a point to mount our electrical connections. We've got a four pole installed on ours, but you could also put a six pole connector, which is the most common style for your flat tow setups here as well. And that's really what it's mainly designed for, but we do have brackets available here at eTrailer.com for four poles as well. And the mounting brackets that come included with your connectors make a great spot for getting your breakaway switch mounted. Because there's not really a lot of places to put your breakaway switch due to this all being plastic. You want this solidly mounted on your vehicle. The other tabs just to the inside of our base plate tabs here are openings for our safety chain cables to be connected to our vehicle. And then we hook the other end to the safety chain loops on the back of our hitch on our motorhome. Now when you're ready to use your base plate, we'll take our tow bar, we're going to lower it down. We can then remove the pin from our tow bar. We can then lift up on the arm on our tow bar. And we're using a, blo a blue ox tow bar, so it's going to line up with our tabs no problem. If you have another manufacturer's tow bar, such as a Roadmaster, we have adapters available here at eTrailer.com so you can have the right end to hook up to your base plate. Once you've got it lined up, you'll slide the pin through and then lock it in place with the linchpin on the other side. We're then going to do the same thing over here on the other side to get the other end of our tow bar hooked up. And now with the rest of our flat tow components hooked up, all that's left is to place our vehicle into tow mode and we're ready to hit the road. We'll begin our installation at the front of the vehicle with our hood open. There's two bolts that we're going to take out of the top of our grill using a 10 millimeter socket. We're now on the side of the vehicle in the front. Here's our front tire. There are pins on the inside here that we'll need to remove. There's three of them and you can use a flat bladed screwdriver or a trim panel remover tool to do so. If you look at the pins, there's going to be a section that has a small slot in it, and that's right there. And that allows you to fit your screwdriver in so you can pop out the center of the tab. And then you can just pull the whole pin out at that point. The center sometimes comes out, but that's the lock. So once you get the center piece out, the other part will come right out with it. Once we've got all the pins removed on this side, we're going to do the exact same thing over on the other side. There's also two pins in the front of the vehicle that we'll need to remove. There's an opening here, and if we go in on each side, there's gonna be a pin if we just look up right there, and these kind of come out just like our other pins. So we'll pop out the center, and then we'll pop out the rest. If you are using a screwdriver, just be careful with these as you do have a cooler right here. You don't wanna accidentally stab your cooler. We're now underneath the vehicle on the front on our driver's side and just in front of the tire here on the bottom we've got two bolts we're going to take out. We're using a 10 millimeter socket and we're also going to remove the two in the same location on the opposite side. We'll then need to remove the bolts going across the center. You'll see three of them and they each kind of have this V-shaped cavity that they go up 
This is the one in the very middle, and there's one on each side of it a little bit further down. We can now start removing our fascia. You'll want to start on one side, and it's easier if you just take the fender line and just peel it back a little bit so you can get your hand in there, and then you'll just pull outward and just kind of work your way around releasing it. Once we've got this side popped out, we're going to go ahead and move over to the other side and get that side popped out. Now that we've got each side popped out, we can come to the center and just pull outward on it. Now you don't want to pull out too hard because depending on your options, you may have electrical connectors. We've got fog lights on our escape here, so we need to make sure we get those disconnected. There's just a release tab right there that you press on and you can just pull it off. We're also going to do the one on the other side. We can now set our fascia aside where it's not going to get damaged. We'll need to remove our air dam here to get it out of the way. There are push pins that we need to pop out on each side. And these are a little bit different than before. The whole pin's going to pop out, not just the center. A trim panel tool works really well because it has a fork. Your screwdriver though, you can use to just start it and pop it up. You can potentially get it all the way out with the screwdriver, but it's a lot easier if you just start it and then use a pair of side cutters and just go under it. And we're not going to squeeze the side cutters. We're actually just going to use them as a pry to just pull it up. And now we've got that released. We can lift up on the top here. This will just raise out of this little slot. We can then come down to the bottom here and just kind of turn it. The little hooks here will pop off and this is just going to hang down to the side like that. We can now take this whole air dam off. There are two clips if you look here at the top and the easiest way to get them off is to just come down here at the bottom and use your screwdriver to just pry them off of there. We can then set this aside. We'll now need to take our temperature sensor off here at the front. It's just is pushed into the bottom of the fascia and there's already a nice little gap there. You can use your flat bladed screwdriver or your side cutters or trim panel tool to pop this out. It's usually easiest to start it with the screwdriver and then if it gets a little bit uh, stuck there, switch over to the side cutters and use those to pry it out. We're just going to move this up just so we can set it out of the way and we're gonna be relocating it to a new spot once we get our base plate installed. Just on the outside of your bumper beam, there are two bolts. We're gonna remove each of these using a 13 millimeter socket. We're also gonna remove the bolts in the same location on the opposite side. We're now gonna prepare a couple of our bolts. These are the 40 millimeter length bolts and that's from the bottom of the head of the bolt to the end. We're going to be sliding on lock washers followed by flat washers. We're going to be using these to temporarily hold our base plate in position, but these need to be on there when we tighten them into the handle at a later point. We can now slide our base plate into position. And we're going to line up the holes in our base plate with the holes in the side of the frame. We're just going to slide the bolt we prepared in there. That'll hold this side up. And then we'll go over to the other side and slide that one in as well. We can now thread in the same length bolt as we used before into the weld nuts. We are going to prepare these. All of our bolts are going to use red Loctite. And this includes the ones we slid in. We're going to be sliding those back out before we... Uh, fully tighten them down. They're just holding our base plate up. But we also need to slide on a lock washer and a flat washer. You'll use a lock washer and a flat washer only for the top two bolts. The ones right below that you're just going to use only the lock washer. So we're just going to go ahead and get that started. And then we're going to do the same thing with our bottom bolt. But again, this one does not get a flat washer it only gets a lock washer. We're gonna do the same thing over on the other side. We can now take the bolt out that we had prepared and we're going to prepare the bolts that we need for our handle nuts. Now, the bolts you're gonna use are gonna vary. If you have existing weld nuts, 
on these back holes here, then you're going to use the same hardware that we used for these front holes into the weld nuts. If you don't have weld nuts here, you'll need to use the standard size bolts that come in your kit. And we want to use the ones that are very close to the same length as the 40 millimeter bolts that we used here. We're going to do just like we did with these bolts. We're going to have one prepared with a lock washer on it for the bottom one, and the other one's going to have a lock washer and a flat washer. Don't forget to use your Loctite as well. It's easiest if you start with the bottom bolt. So we're going to go ahead and slide that in. We're going to take our handle nut. We're going to feed it down through the slot here in the top and thread our bolt onto it. Now that we've got that one on, we're just going to do the same thing here with our top one. Just want to remember that you need to have that flat washer also on your bolt. Now that we've got all these started on this side, we're going to go over to the other side and start those bolts in the exact same way. We'll now need to prepare our lower hardware. If you have weld nuts here at the bottom, then you can just straight install your bolts. If you don't have weld nuts in the frame here at the bottom, then the existing hole that's down here in the bottom will need to be enlarged to fit our handle nuts in. So you'll want to either use a step bit or a regular bit or a hole saw to enlarge it to about one and a quarter inch to fit your handle nuts in. Now you can use, again, you can use whatever you want where you have available to do so. Now that we've got our hole drilled out, we can take our handle nuts and slide them up into the hole. And then we'll take the longest bolts that come in our kit. We're going to slide a lock washer on them. Don't forget your red Loctite. And it's going to slide through the base plate into a small spacer. Then we're going to go through the vehicle's frame there. And now we can take the handle nut and we're just going to line it up with that bolt. Sometimes it is necessary to bend the handle nut to get it to line up. So we're just going to give a little bend to it there. And we're just going to thread it right into it. It's pretty difficult to see in there. You're going more off of a feel. You should feel the handle nut kind of catch around the bolt. The hard part is just getting the right angle for it to catch the threads. We'll then do the same thing for the other hole on this side, and we're going to repeat this exact same process over on the other side. Now that we've got all of our hardware started, we can go back and tighten everything down. If you're using the bolts that thread into weld nuts, you'll tighten those down with a 17 millimeter socket. If you're using the bolts that go into handle nuts, you'll tighten that down with a 15 millimeter socket. We can then go back and torque our hardware to the specifications found in our instructions. We can now go back and trim off our handle nuts. The easiest way to do that is with a pair of side cutters and just go ahead and grip it with your side cutters. It's gonna be hard to cut it at first, but if you take it and just kind of work it back and forth, your cutters will glide right through it with ease. We can now take the temperature sensor that we had moved out of the way, and we're gonna relocate it. When we do that, you need to cut off the tab here at the back. We don't wanna cut off the ribbed one here because it's gonna hold it in place, just this alignment peg. And then we can come straight down on top of the bumper beam there, and there's already a pre-existing hole. We'll just push the ribbed connector right down inside of the hole, and that'll hold it in place. We can now take the supplemental safety cables that come with our kit, and we're going to install those. It'll use the quick link hook to connect it right here, but we need to feed it around the frame and then reconnect it there. So we're going to go in through the hole here, Going down the frame, being careful not to pinch any hoses between the frame and our cable. And then once we get it through there, we're just going to bring it right back around. And we can connect it 
to our base plate using the quick link. The hardest part with this usually is getting them on there and then twisting the nut. Once we get this done, we're gonna do the same thing over on the other side. We can now put our air dam back in place. Now we are gonna to have to trim this when we go back in. So we're just gonna hold it up there first to see where we need to trim to get an idea. So we'll snap in the top ones, so that way it'll hold those in place. We know that these pins are gonna go here. Our temperature sensor is gonna use up the one pin. We can pull it back out and put it in there. That's not gonna be a big deal to hold this in. But this section here, we do need to trim out to clear our base plate, so this way it can click back in down there. So we're just gonna take our paint stick and we're gonna mark the area and then cut it out. So we're gonna go ahead and mark it here and we can see that this sticks out much further up here at the top. So you can kind of help use that as a guide to get an idea of how much we're gonna trim off. And I really only plan on just trimming it off basically until it's about flush with the bottom there on the outside of that. So we're just gonna mark those out. We'll have to trim across the top there as well. So we're just gonna cut this out with a pair of snips and then we'll do the same thing over on the other side. There's a little small piece here in the back where it connects. It can be easier to cut if you cut that little piece so you can fold this up and that way you can just cut straight down. And we just want to verify it's going to fit. And everything looks good there, so we're just going to repeat that over on the other side. So we went ahead and pulled that temperature sensor back up just so we could put it down through the hole to secure this in place. Now that we've got our base plate fully installed, we can reinstall our fascia in reverse order of how we removed it. We don't need to do any trimming as our components are going to pass through the existing openings in your fascia. But one of the things that I do highly recommend is if you're doing a complete flat toe setup, to leave your fascia off and finish the rest of your flat toe setup, such as your diode wiring and your braking system, because having the fascia off is gonna make wiring up and getting those components installed much easier. So we're gonna go ahead and finish our flat toe setup, and then we'll come back here to the fascia and get it back on. One of the things you will notice is that I did take the electrical connector back off because we do need to have it off to get our fascia back on so we can slide it through and then we can reinstall it once the fascia is back on. So we're just gonna take our fascia, bring it up. We're gonna slide this through the opening that's towards the center, but slightly towards the driver's side. And then we can just line everything up and start snapping it back in place. And here you can see why I had to remove the wiring. The center pillar here would hit the wiring while it's installed. So you just gotta take it off. You don't need to cut it because since it's offset just a little bit here, that our wiring will sit right next to it when we go to put it back on. Now with our fascia and our wiring back installed, we're all set and ready to go hook up to our motorhome and enjoy flat done. And that completes our installation of Blue Ox's base plate on our 2009 Ford Escape.